All right. So welcome to the webinar, how to create emails that actually convert. I'm Felicity Miller and I'm here today with Alita Harvey Rodriguez from Milkit Training Academy. And we are super excited to be here with you to present this webinar. Now I'm just going to share my screen and get the slides shared just so that we can get straight into it. So as I mentioned, my name is Felicity Miller. I'm not actually Kelly Newbury. Unfortunately, Kelly couldn't join us here today. Um, she's come down with a bit of a cold and she sounds like Kermit the Frog. So you've got me instead. <laughs> I am the content specialist here at NITO. So I manage um, all of the blog and content and do a fair bit of email marketing as well. Uh, and for those of you who aren't familiar with NITO, we are Australia's only retail management platform that provides a complete solution for e-commerce, point of sale, inventory and fulfillment. And we'll be standing by, as I mentioned before, to answer any retail specific questions that you have. And I'm absolutely thrilled to be joined by Alita today, who is the managing director from Milkit Academy, a training platform to advance marketers skills into new school digital leadership roles. Over to you now, Alita. Hi guys, thank you so much for having me. I'm uh, really excited to be here and presenting this um, with the amazing crew at NITO. Um, just to give you guys a little bit of context about Milkit Academy, we're not like any other training academy. We are completely focused for the improvement of retail and everything that we do is completely customised to your business, your skills and the outcomes that you want to achieve. Um, so with that said, I'll just tell you a little bit about me. I have been in the digital marketing industry, um, specifically around consumer communications um, and marketing automation for the last 12 years. Um, prior to that, I did one of the first ever coding courses, um, creative coding courses ever here in, in Australia. Um, those skills are wildly outdated now, um, but the skills that aren't outdated is, is around marketing automation um, and consumer engagement. <clears throat> um, I started out in um, technology when I was really a little kid at about 12 years old. Um, I got really angry at our principal um, from a tiny little um, country primary school and um, I said to him, why don't we have the internet? My family was very fortunate to have um, one of the first internet connections um, dial up dial-up connections um, in this little town and I couldn't understand why we didn't have it at school um, and you know of course and there was the bureaucracy that we need to have the intranet we need to protect your kids and um, at the time when Google didn't exist I found a way somehow to hook up um, with the help of two friends to hook up the internet at this tiny little school we had um, so that's that's what I did at 12 years old by the time I was um, 14 I was um, at school in an um, IT class they were trying to teach me how to use PowerPoint I got wildly um, bored and started um, finding a way to hack into the um, main servers of our school um, and then changed all of the shutdown messages to this awful little painting that I did, um, like this little screen that I made up in, in paint um, with this, it was just, it was horrendous. But the bottom line is I, I hacked into the mainframe of this school and this was all born out of curiosity. And I think in order to be a really great community, uh, a communicator on the internet um, and to know what your customers really want is that you need to curious person you constantly need to ask why and what and and you know why do they want this and and what is really working so this natural curiosity that I have has led me into this beautiful career that I've had and, and is now um, allowing me to share my knowledge and the knowledge of our team um, who come from a, a really diverse um, area of digital marketing to be able to share it with you guys so that we can help retail to get better and be stronger and really um, make our own brands really mean something to people um, and and help us to strengthen our, our cause against um, against uh, against you know the Amazons and things that are coming into the world. So with that said, let's step into it. I don't want to bang on about me too much. This is about you guys today and um, <laughs> how we can help you to send more emails that are going to convert better. All right, Flick, if you can just move forward. Um, just on that, I'd really like to find out exactly what it is, um, you know, who have we got in the room? Um, have we got marketers? Have we got 
owners? Um, do we have designers? Do we have technologists? Who have we, who have we got in, in the room? Um, just drop a little comment in there just so I know who I'm talking to so that I can make my comments and, and um, teachings from today really specific to help you guys. Marketers, owners, who's wearing a thousand hats? All right, all right, lots of hats. All right, good. And um, what is the number one struggle that you guys have? What is the number one challenge that you have, the biggest question that you've got around email marketing today? Be good to hear that as well. So hopefully I can address some of those concerns and hopefully solve some problems for you guys today. Um, it'd be really nice to... Yeah, just make sure that we're uh, that I'm really addressing these primary concerns that you guys have, so that you can get something out of this. I hate hate doing webinars where you know you hear a lot about the presenter and you sit there for an hour and not actually learn a thing. We want to make this short, sharp, and and really give you guys something chunky to go away with today, so that you can make an improvement to your business. All right, good. Some deliverability issues, some spam box. All right, awesome. We're going to help to solve those some of those things today because some things have changed around that. Writing good content. Yep. Yeah, okay. That's all right. They're really okay. Good. Good. We're going to solve some of these issues today. All righty. So the agenda for the webinar. What you guys are going to learn today is um, the main thing about email some essential facts that you should know that you should be benchmarking yourself against at least at a basic level, where email has come from um, and where it is today. This will give you a really good check-in as to where you're actually at with email. You know, are you on the trend? You know, are you behind the bandwagon? Are you on the bandwagon or are you leading the bandwagon? Um, biggest trends in email um, and how they've changed the way that we're actually um, communicating um, through the different um, devices. Um, quick win areas for you to focus on in email, so how to improve those opens, how to improve those clicks, how to improve the conversions. I'll talk about day of week and some timing things as well that should help you. Um, and then where do we go to from here? At the end of this webinar as well, I will also be opening our doors up to 20 people. Um, so it's a first in best dressed. Uh, we're doing, we want to do a study um, and kick it off with you guys is finding out the state of um, retail um, email for the Australian small and growing business market. Um, and why do we want to do that? Because a lot of reports come out of the United States. We don't really understand where the skills gaps are for um, for small and growing and medium and growing businesses in Australia. And I think it's really important that we do understand these things so that you guys know where you can improve yourselves because email is changing at a rapid rate. Um, the technology that we can put into our emails now, where email sits in a customer journey, all these things are changing. And if we know where you guys are at from a majority perspective, you can benchmark yourself against that and know what you're to aim for so um, we want to do this study and invite 20 people um, to be a part of this so stay tuned for that one all righty so the thing with email is time uh, so this is um, where marketers spend their time doing routine tasks so organizing collecting data and analyzing the data is a really big time sucker um, but it's something that we definitely need to do and the second behind that is email and the why this is interesting is because of the return on investment that we get from email, which I'll talk about in a minute. Um, but if we're spending a lot of time in email um, and but we're not getting the return from it, then it seems like it's something that's not valuable for us. But the truth is, is that the better you get with your email, the more your emails follow the customer's journey and understand that why and what's working, we're going to get a lot better with it. So let's just make sure that we understand that it does take time to send a great email. On average, it takes about two weeks to put together a good email. Um, who's taking less than that? Who's who's taking more? Who's just given almost given up on email because they can't understand why it works? Um, I understand that the, one of the biggest frustrations that you've popped into the comments there is is um, is creating great content so um, hopefully we'll get to the bottom of bottom of that today Alrighty. so if time is spent in email let's flick over to the to the next slide and it's time is spent in email time is money we know that the more time we spend in something it's either going to suck money out of us but what if time can actually 
equal a difference. If we can dedicate time to our email today and dedicate time to our email up front, start to understand and use automation strategically, we can reduce the time that we spend on email whilst improving the revenue that we're generating from email. So what I'd really like you guys to think about is where you're going to dedicate your time so that time can equal a difference. Let's go to the next slide. Beautiful. So I think the most important thing for you guys to understand today, especially the ones who are getting some deliverability issues, the guys who are growing their list and the ones that are really struggling with content, clicks um, and those conversions, is that the inbox now runs an algorithm. So even if you send it, you know, you send a great email, it goes to spam or you send a great email, it goes to the inbox, but it doesn't get opened. The likeliness of that email then being marked as spam moving forward automatically by your email system, even though you may not have said anything, is is greatly increased. So engagement is key for email marketing for today, 2018 and, and then beyond. And it's only going to get harder to get that inbox placement. So you really need to understand what your customers are looking for, where they're at with their journey and why that piece of communication is going to matter to them. I mean, how and you know, how can you get them to actually open more emails? Um, I'd just really like to put out a call to you guys just to see how much this, how relevant this is, and, and, and how true this is. Is next time you go into your emails, go into the junk folder and start to open some of those emails from brands that are falling into your junk, junk folder. Why? Because if you go and open two, three, four, five emails from a particular brand that have all gone into junk, you should start seeing them appear in your inbox. And it'll just show you how those algorithms are, give you a little snapshot on how those algorithms are, are focused on engagement. Alrighty. So how do we actually improve that engagement? Let's go to the next slide. Beautiful. First things first is we need to understand some really essential facts about email. Like I said, email takes a lot of time, uh, but the return on investment from email is really significant. It outperforms SEO, it outperforms PPC, it outperforms content marketing. Um, and but the bottom line is, is that it's not receiving the time or the budget um, that it requires in order to be really, really great for businesses. There is some good news though. The average open rate for retail is 25.6%. Um, uh, and just make a comment of who is actually achieving that, who's getting over it, who's getting under. I mean, the click-through rate is sitting at about 15% on average um, for, for email, and this is globally. So just make a comment of who's achieving that, getting under or over, um, and um, hopefully we'll give you some information today that you can use to improve that. The average revenue per email sent is currently sitting at about $11 um, and it is $39 um, return on investment per dollar spent. This exceeds every other channel um, in terms of, of return per dollar spent. In terms of the best day of week, um, we've just recently done some studies um, from some of our retailers and we have understood very, very clearly that Thursday outperforms from a return perspective dramatically over um, any other day of the week. In terms of um, opens, we see a better open rate on Wednesday. It depends. So if you if, if engagement is something that you really need to lift because you're getting into the inbox, I would focus on um, getting those emails out on a Wednesday um, um, just because if you need to lift that engagement, it'll get you out of the spam folder um, and then gradually migrate over to a Thursday so that you're starting to see that really, really strong return. But in saying that, every single one of these benchmarks or best practices that I give you today is going to be very unique to your business. You really need to be focused on what your best practice is and start to set some of those in your businesses as opposed to, I'm just going to follow what the experts say. Become the, your own expert in your business and understand what numbers are working for you. Alrighty. Next slide. All right, beautiful. So I think for you to understand where email is, is going and where it is now, you really need to understand the evolution of where email is. Oh, it seems like we might have lost a slide here. Oh, sorry. This one? That's all right. 
yeah, evolution beautiful. of email. <laughs> there you, we go. Thank you. Alrighty. So the evolution of email has been really, really interesting. And this will give you an idea about where you might be sitting and where you need to focus to go. So obviously we're talking about opens and click throughs, like um, emails that are going to get you better conversions. We've talked about day of week, but we also need to understand where you're at in terms of your maturity in email. So in 1972, a guy called Raymond Tomlinson invented email, and this was one of those incremental innovations of really simple, how can I do this better? He was at a university, there were a whole bunch of computers lined up, and each email had its own unique address, your IP address, and he, at that time, emails, oh, sorry, communications couldn't be sent from computer to computer. What would happen is, is that somebody would come into a computer, they would write a message for the next user of that computer to open, and you could only access that when you logged in. And he thought, if each computer has a different address, why can't I send this message from my computer? to their computer. And that's exactly what he did. And um, he refined this, re he refined this, this is where the at symbol come out, came from. So let's send it to this computer at IP address. And he sent it and he, he did this, he did it, you know, in, within a day and then email was born. It was pretty, um, it was pretty rough and, um, you know, had the beautiful black and green screen and was pretty standard. But by the time the 90s came around, fonts and layouts were added and we were able to do some relatively decent stuff with email. Um, it, that's for the 90s. Then we started to see things like chat rooms and all these types of things start to evolve. Um, by 2002, from in early 2000s, the email was the growth of email was really, really rapid um, in terms of what we could do. So background colors were added. We were starting to use HTML um, in coding our emails, which still hasn't, we're still using HTML today, but um, what we can actually do with that code has evolved massively. So then the mobile era was born. Um, and what happened in the mobile era is that all of the fonts and all that cool, nice stuff that we were doing in our emails just looked horrendous. But the bottom line is we got email into a mobile device and the mobile era was born. From there, then we evolved into the responsive era where um, our emails would go from being, you know, really hard to look at and our scrolling buttons and, you know, and, you know, having to zoom in and zoom out. And if you're still guilty of doing this, if you don't know that your email is working properly on a mobile, you must look to re-template. Going to a responsive, um, a responsive template will make a massive difference um, to the to the way that your emails get interacted with um, on a mobile device, and it will 100% increase your increase your click through rates. So what you want to see is going from these big columns to see things shifting. But then we also need to understand that we have a difference between types of responsive. We've got responsive light, which is just a template simply shifting and evolving just for the mobile device. But then we've got a full responsive template where we're seeing content fly in and out based on the device that that person's opening it on and seeing um, our content in our emails become conditional. So, I mean, it'd be really good to just see some comments coming in of just so I know who, who where we're at in terms of our email maturity. Don't feel guilty if you don't know, um, but, um, you know, tell us, just let me know a little bit about um, where you think you might be at do you know if your template is responsive? Are you using responsive light? And, um, or are you in the, the next phase where you're using conditional full responsive templates? Uh, and now, you know, we've seen some, it says 2003 here, but it's actually came out in 2009. We started to see some really great, um, some really great changes coming to email and started to make them a little bit more interactive. We've got cool things like sliders, we've got navigation bars, we've got um, we've got really cool things like we call them the scratchy emails where we hold up the phone like this and we've got the email sitting there and then we move it like that and it reveals this code. So we're seeing some really cool stuff um, come in and uh, um, into our email coding um, that are making things a lot more interactive. So if you think that um, the evolution of your email is just stopping at, you know, sending a standard email that looks kind of, that looks nice, you know, we've got this next level to go to. Then we've got conditional content, hyper personalization, and all of these things that I'll talk about in a minute. All right, next slide. Hmm. There we go. <laughs> 
Beautiful. So where email's going is into, um, is you know, we're starting to see things move into wearable technology and starting to see messaging evolve um, into um, the internet of things and and notifications come through on, on wearable devices and, you know, the next evolution of email is really, really exciting. Um, but if, you know, if you guys you know, have a think about where you might be on the scale. Um, and ideally, we want to help you to move into the next into the next level of your email. So um, what we the way that we interact with email has really changed a lot. Um, and it's helped consumers to become more empowered. So it's harder to get into the inbox. It's harder to collect an email address. It doesn't mean that it's impossible. You just need to become better at getting them. You need to understand your customers a lot more. In fact, I was reading uh, an article recently, um, in fact, it was just yesterday on internetretailing.com.au um, that their editor did an interview with a guy who's an AI expert. And that's where we're really heading with email. Um, you know, nothing is ever going to be perfect, uh, but we really need to start gathering our data and using our data strategically so that we can evolve our businesses out of where they are today. Um, and it's important that you dedicate time to understanding these things and understanding who your customers are, what they want and why. The guy who was interviewed, in fact, said that it was profession, um, professional, it's, it was professionally lazy in to ignore not finding out what your customers really want and following their journey. So hopefully um, today, if you are dabbling in automation, um, if you're well into automation, um, if you're well into your email marketing, um, even if you're not, that you're thinking about what you can do next with the data sets that you've got. And not clouding that as well. I really always recommend for people to pick three data sets or three data points that they really want to improve and, and do their ideation around that. Um, in terms of what we do at Milk Academy, we do a lot of stuff around design thinking. Uh, and, you know, usually design thinking talks around, um, you know, product innovation, but we're using it in design thinking in our marketing. So, um, so if you're keen to, keen to learn more, than, more about that and how we use it, please get in touch. I'm really happy to talk to you more about it. All right, so today we really want to be working towards this email utopia, like Amazon is using their data across, if you are signed up to Amazon or if you're in the Iconic, your emails uh, will change based on your browser history, um, on your purchase history, and that's really where we want to be heading um, as opposed to these spray and pray emails. So we want to use super hyper personalization. We want to use really deep segmentation. Um, if you're not at that level, again, think of those three data sets that you can work on to improve today. So, but this is really where we want to be heading full um, AI and automation uh, in our email schedules. Because, you know, if we go back to what I was saying before about money, um, time is money and time can equal a difference. Just think about if you dedicate some time over the next 12 months to getting an email marketing automation program, not just set up, but actually a program, your own program fully implemented. Think about the time that that's going to save you and the revenue that can come out of that, that you have kind of gone done and you're just seeing it come in. It's where we really want to be. All righty. Next, please. All right, so I think, you know, it's time to talk about the biggest trend in email so far, and this is um, the massive shift over to the um, over to the mobile inbox. Um, it, people behave differently um, in the mobile inbox. The generations work differently. So if you have a typically millennial market, um, these guys will open the open on a mobile device and they will transact on a mobile device. Um, in the baby boomers, they open less on a mobile device, but they, um, and they always, almost always transact through the, through a browser. Um, Generation X, they'll, um, it's about 50-50 split depending on how savvy they are, but what they'll do is they'll open it on an inbox, um, on a mobile, um, and then they'll save it, they'll mark it as unread, and then they'll come and transact um, on, on the desktop. Uh, so we see differences of how people are using email through the different generations. But the bottom line is, is that the majority of emails are now opened on a mobile device. So not having a mobile responsive template um, or, you know, not treating your designs as, you know, poor eyesight and fat fingers, you know, is you're really doing yourself a disservice. So 
go and open one of your emails on a mobile device and, and see what you're actually doing and think about how you can improve it, thinking about bad eyesight and fat fingers. Next, please. All right, beautiful. All right, so now we're getting into the good, the good, good, the even better stuff, um, which is um, improving those opens, clicks, and then ultimately improving those email conversion rates. All righty, let's go. This is where the leaders are focused at the moment. Next slide, please, Fleek. Thank you. All right, how do we improve these open rates? Now, uh, getting your open, so opens is really uh, important for um, improving that. Uh, inbox deliverability. So if you find your emails are going into spam, you need to find a way to get people to open your emails um, first and foremost. So we've just recently done some testing um, and the sender name does make a, significant, a really significant difference. Um, we even saw a 25% increase in an open rate um, just by changing the sender name. Some of the things that we've tested is um, from the brand name, from a person and the brand name, and from something like offers or deals or um, something like that. So it just depends, like these are things that you want to test. Um, I can't give you a golden you know, utopia do this um, because your database is going to be different from the person that's sitting next to you. And then of course, writing a great subject line is the next most important thing as to why people actually open an email. Um, the offer as well. So, I mean, this comes down to the why, but I think if we just focus for now on the sender name and the subject line, I think that you're in for some improvements. So I'll just talk about subject line trends. We can go to the next slide, please, Flick. Got it? Yep, beautiful. All right, so subject line trends. This is going to help you to improve those open rates. Um, so subject with characters from 40 to 60 um, on a focusing on the mobile inbox um, are performing better than long. Now, this comes back to setting your own benchmarks and understanding your own data. Some of our brands have seen significant improvements when we've shortened the um, subject line. Other brands that we have, have it's just, it's killed their open rates. Why? Because of the nature of their business, what the customers are used to. Um, and it depends on, you know, deal sites work really, really well with long subject lines because there's a lot of context there in, in what you'll be receiving, in, in what you'll get when you open this email. So this is something that you definitely want to put into your testing matrix. Um, Six to 10 words is the absolute sweet spot um, for the amount of, um, for the amount of words that you want to put into, put into your, um, into your emails in order to improve those open rates. So retention science um, did a, did a whole bunch of testing and they found that six to um, 10 words was delivering a much higher open rate than the other tests. Personalization still 100% works. You know, we think that, oh, is first name really going to make that much of a difference? In all of our testing, yes, most of the time we do it. So sometimes we'll hold off on using that for a really, really important campaign. Uh, but personalization isn't just about the first name anymore. It goes so much deeper than that. And we use it in terms of a in terms of price, we use it in terms of a product, um, in terms of um, what the deal might look like for that particular person based on where they're at in their, in their, in their journey. So um, if you're not using personalization, just start with using first name um, and then you can dive then you can dive deeper into, into some more, better, deeper personalization. Um, you know, this is exactly what Amazon and the iconic do. They're deep into, the, into their personalization. All right, so the next thing that you need to do in terms of subject line trends is really write subject lines like you're writing a status update. Why? Because people are used to seeing quick contextual active voice versus passive voice. Um, if you don't know what that is, there's some really great articles out there. Just um, look, look up, you know, active versus passive copywriting. And you really need to get your copywriting skills tight um, when it comes to writing subject lines because this is what's grabbing people's attention. Um, the, if you are reducing the amount of um, words that you have in your subject line, please make sure that you're using that pre-header space really well. Just on that, I know that there's a bit of confusion about what pre-header space might be. Some people don't know what it is. Some people definitely do. But for those who don't, just drop into the chat box um, whether you don't. And I'll just quickly explain what that is um, at the end of this slide. Uh, and the final subject line trend is to 
always test, always test your subject line. So test your gut instinct versus what you know about your customers versus best practice. Um, in terms of best practice, it's a really interesting one. This is why I always say find your own best practice um, because we tested the new best practice has come out that saying red buttons work a lot better than green. It used to be green that used to convert better and on an average scale for email marketing, we tested some red buttons and the conversions absolutely died. Um, so, and then we tested it in a contrasting color against the brand colors and we saw a massive improvement on, on the, um, on the click through rate. So make sure that you're always setting your own benchmark best practice or test it against best or test it against reported best practice as well. Alrighty. Okay. There's a few people that aren't really a hundred percent sure on the pre-headed text. So what that is, is the, you see your from name, your subject line, and this piece of gray, it's, you know, gray, soft, usually gray, soft um, type text that more often than not says, um, click here to view online or click here to unsubscribe. Not really a great use of space. It is the first bit of text that you see in your email template. Make sure that you're using that space wildly, wildly, wisely. Um, and what I mean by that is, you know, if you've got your subject line that doesn't have much context and you've got this great offer, so, you know, you need this this summer, use your pre-header text um, to say something like 20% off summer essentials. All right, beautiful. Now, on to improving your click in your clicks. Oh, beautiful. Alrighty. Use your buttons. Um, add buttons into your emails. So um, I know um, I often see emails come out that don't have buttons on it. And it sounds like a really basic, obvious tip. People don't click if you don't tell them where to click. Um, you know, we think that we're so proficient in email, but we need to reduce the time that people have to think. Um, people don't like to think for themselves. You need to guide them in the path that you want to help, that you want them to take whilst being authentic to where they're at in the journey. So adding buttons like shop now can increase your click-through rates by up to 50%. So this is some client data that, um, that we've been collecting um, for a little while that we, again, want to improve with, um, which I'll talk to you about in a minute. So experiment with your buttons. Um, depending on where they might be in the campaign. So uh, if so, using shop now versus activate code, um, just make sure that you're testing these things all the time um, and experiment with the call to action that you're using and just find out what really works for your customers. Uh, use bold images. Um, this one, again, might sound a little bit obvious, but you want to, in 2017 and beyond, our our attention span has decreased dramatically and we do not read emails anymore. We scan them. So you want to be aiming for about 120 characters maximum um, for, for your email. So that kind of really leaves you with a really great big bold heading, a subheading, and then maybe some other like little product bits of product information in your in your um, in your emails and then let the landing page that you're taking to them to do the talking you know let your description your product descriptions um, and your FAQs do the talking for you we don't want to we really want this transaction between email and conversion to be really quick I'm um, use re real-time email triggers so um, what I mean by that is if you're if you're in automation you'll know what I mean um, if you're not um, Use, use your email triggers to get into that inbox as quickly as possible. Start to use triggers in order to build your relationship with that particular person based on what they did or didn't do or may do next um, on your website. So um, if somebody signs up to your list, you want to get them an email straight away, um, at least within a few minutes, just to say, you know, thank you for joining and tell them a little bit about yourself and, and, um, and go through that process. So that's just really the basics of, um, of marketing automation. So maybe we'll cover that off in another uh, webinar sometime. Um, and then dynamic content. So dynamic content really is about populating your email with content that is significant to that person. So what I mean by that is um, we may be, you may be a retailer that sells um, for products for both men and women. Um, you have a 20% off store wide sale. Um, you have men and women on your database and you go out to the entire database with a picture of a guy wearing these great pants that you've got, um, a great bestseller and he's walking his dog that isn't going to be particularly 
um, inviting or engaging for a woman who has a cat. So what I mean by that, what I mean by dynamic content, at least at a basic level, is that you swap out your content and you have different images prepared based on a condition that somebody has in your database. So for example, if we know that this person is female, um, then we change that content dynamically to a woman wearing a skirt with a cat. For example, this thing, dynamic content works on the information that you have in your database um, and your the customer records. Um, so you can use this at a state at a, at a state level um, and things like that. But you guys, I believe, will be getting the um, the ebook, which has a whole bunch of information about segmentation too. So remember dynamic content when you look at that. Alrighty, next. Next up. Oops. Sorry, got a That's bit of a. All right. <laughs> all good. <laughs> Beautiful. All right. So this is um this this is for you guys. We really want to work. We, we want to work with twenty people um over the next year to help us to put together a study about um the state of email um in retail. Uh, we see a lot of studies come out of the United States. A lot of them are focused on enterprise businesses, but we want to work with um small, medium and emerging businesses to understand where the skills are in email, what skills the market needs, um, and also the, just a general state of email in this particular sector of retail. Uh, we really want to help this market um, become better educated and uh, make sure that make sure that you're really um, getting everything that you need to thrive in email so that you can help to arm yourselves against, you know, the big guys that are coming in and like Amazon and build better customer relationships. So today we're looking for 20 of you to um, that we want to work with over the next um, over the next 12 months. And it's going to take 45 minutes of your time um, to start off. So let's um, just jump into that the next slide flick so that everybody knows um, who can be involved and, and what's involved. All right. So all right, it's good to see that. All right, awesome. I'm glad um, you guys are already engaged and, and wanting to be a part of this. This is so cool. All right, so who can be involved? It does not matter about your um, email maturity because we really need to get broad spectrum of the market. If you're just starting out in email, if you've been dabbling with email or you're quite advanced I and mean, you really want to take it to the next level, we want to talk to you. Um, it does not matter about level of knowledge in email, but what it does what does matter is that you want to improve your knowledge and you want to improve your results. Um, you need to have 45 minutes to dedicate um, to talk with us. And in that time, um, we will make sure that we give you a personal a, a idea of your personal state of email. So where you're at now and where you can go to, what are the, some of the quick wins that you can get out of it? Um, we'll give you a gap analysis of your email and then we'll give you four key projects that you can focus on for the next 12 months to get some improvements out of your email so the word so this whole entire um this whole entire process for you individually is worth 479 dollars but we, we're doing this of course absolutely free because we want to help to improve the state of email um, for this sector of retail in australia so there is a limited time to apply um, we are limited in the spaces um so please i think flick do we have the link up there that everybody can go and yeah, register so you just see in the right hand corner of your screen where the chat box is, there'll be a, a little a uh, little image there and a button that you can click on to go and sign up if you're interested. Yeah, awesome, guys. Please go ahead and um, sign up. This is going to be a really a, a foundational thing for the state of email um, in in um, Australia. This has never, ever been done before and um, we're really excited to, to, to help you guys to improve and, and let's, you know, let's make email better in Australia and, and help to bring this state of Australian retail into a force to be reckoned with um, on an international level. Alrighty, I think that's it from me. Oh, good. I'm so glad to see people signing up. This is awesome. So, well, we should jump into where to from here. So, first and first, to think about your audience. So, um, if you're, you know, you want to think about your segment and why it matters to them. And um, then we move in. So the second thing is to think about your what. So what's working? So set your baseline statistics and know what you want to get, want to improve to get better engagement. Um, this is something that's really important. And this is something that if you don't know how to do this, it will 100% come out of this, um, of our, of, of the, of the 45 minute meeting that we can have. Um, the, the um, use buttons. The third thing is to use buttons in your 
in your emails and use really bold images. You know, it might seem like it makes perfect sense. You know, it might seem like a really simple thing to add buttons into your emails, but if you don't have them, please add them. And if you do have them, please test them. Um, and have some method to your testing as well. You know, there's no point in testing for testing's sake. Make sure that you understand exactly what you want to correlate in, in your data to understand what why that improvement happened. Personalise everything that you're doing. So personalise the name, personalise the images, personalise the product, personalise the deal. So what I mean by that is if you know a customer spends on average $150 per transaction with you and another one spends on average $25 per transaction, there's no point in going to somebody saying, hey, uh, we've got you know free shipping for people who spend over um, $150. What we want to do is say, um, you know, if it's free shipping for everybody, then it's free shipping for, for everybody who spends $50. And then you don't want to miss out on that basket size with those um, with that higher tier. So go out to them with a different message and, and find, you know, what that, that what that little clincher in their in their spend is and, and personalize your messages to them. Timing a hundred percent matters uh, in in email. Um, so so, you know, we see a higher return on investment when we send out on a, on a Thursday, um, but we also see, so for the retailers out there that are dealing with young mums, um, like brand new mums and things like that, a really great time to start sending to those people um, is around two o'clock in the morning. Why? You know, that 12 to 2, 12 to 2 a.m., why? Because the mum's usually got up um, and she's disrupted in her routine because um, her new baby has just awoken and she want something to keep her awake during this time. Um, so we see a lot of in, um, increases in clicks and transactions come through from that market. So timing really matters, not just from, you know, a best practice perspective, but again, setting your own best practice. Look out for your time. And then of course, let's test, test and test some more. Testing is going to get you improvements, but you want to know why you're testing and what you're going to learn. Um, otherwise there's, you know, there's point in testing, but if there's no real structure behind it, make sure that you get some. So if that's something that you're not really um, proficient on, again, really let's, you know, let's have a chat. Um, let's get you in for that 45 minute session and, and see where you guys are at with, with all of this and see if we can help you in that, in that perspective there. All right, guys, thank you so much for joining today. Um, that's it from me. I hope that this was this was helpful and that you've taken a lot of tips away from this. Um, you know, I'm not, I don't like to present webinars where you hear um, somebody bang on about themselves for about 45 minutes. It's not helpful for anybody. Um, I know I don't like them, so I'll never deliver a webinar like that. I just hope that you guys have got some value and um, hopefully you've clicked on that link and we'll be, we'll be chatting soon. Thanks, Alita, and thank you everybody for joining us today. That was a really, really insightful webinar. There's definitely a couple of things that I've picked up that I'm going to implement for my email marketing, so I hope you guys have too.